everyone, my name is Jackie Thompson and I'm a biochemistry major at Sacramento State University. And welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about four things. The first one is mental health, specifically depression and anxiety, how to, the different symptoms of those and how to help manage them. The second thing is how to stay productive. And the third thing is how to stay engaged in your online classes. And the fourth thing is a couple of studying tips. So let's get to it. So the first thing is how to identify depression. I'm going to identify a couple of depressive symptoms and everything that I'm using in this video, I'm going to post it below in the description so you can go check out those links. Um, I highly recommend that and of course I am not, I cannot tell you if you do have depression or anxiety, this is just the research that I have done and I found about depression and anxiety. So how to identify depression. So these are a couple of symptoms. You don't feel pleasure in your usual activities so, and even sexual activities or masturbation if you don't feel pleasure in those anymore, that could be a symptom. Also loss of appetite or unintentional weight changes. Uh, loss of energy, sleep changes like insomnia or if you're sleeping too much, those are all um, symptoms and also reckless behavior and self-loathing. So how to help manage your depression? A couple of things that you can do is one, I think it's really important to acknowledge that you might be depressed. Um, it's not a bad thing, you know, it happens, especially during this time of social isolation and not being able to go see your other family members and your friends. It can be very hard and not everyone is taking this um, well, and that's okay. It's uh, you're not alone. You're there's a lot of other people who feel the same way So once you acknowledge that you are depressed then you can start making changes and do things to help you get out of that and just help manage it so another thing you can do is FaceTime or video chat your friends or family and and tell them how you feel and how you've been feeling during this time and uh, and maybe they'll have some insight to tell you maybe they've gone through it themselves and they can have some good advice to tell you and it would be good to just kind of let it off your chest and express your emotions to these people close to you. So another thing is trying to process your feelings so along with that getting it off your chest another good thing if you don't want to talk to them is you can journal, you can paint, you can draw or you can just cry whatever you think is going to make you feel good I highly recommend you do that. Um, I personally really like to journal. I have quite a few different journals that I constantly write in and I find it to be very, very relaxing and it helps to just get all my emotions out on paper. So the last thing you want to do is just bottle everything up inside and think you're alone and that nobody is going to understand. So just try to get it out. And another thing is just try to let go of what you can't control and focus on what you can control. Especially with the pandemic that is happening, there's a lot of things that are out of our control. So just really focus on what you can control in your household. And if you don't feel like talking to family members or friends, uh, another resource you can use is text CONNECT to 741741. Uh, this is a trained crisis counselor that can help you and if you don't want to talk on the phone, you can just text them. It's as simple as that and there are also other really good hotline sources that you can use and I will link those in the description below. So if you need that help or if you're feeling suicidal or super depressed, uh, go check those out and reach out to those people. It's completely anonymous and they will be more than help happy to help you. Now on to anxiety. How to identify anxiety. Um, if you're having excessive and irrational fears, trouble concentrating, irritability, excessive sweating, abdominal pain, sometimes you feel abdominal pain, and shaking and trembling are all symptoms of anxiety. Of course, there's many other symptoms as well, but these are just a couple that I'm listing. So how to help manage your anxiety. Again, talk to friends and family. It's really important to talk to those close to you so that you can let them in on how you're feeling so that they can try and help you the best way that they can. Another thing you can do to help with your anxiety is try to get rid of non-essential responsibilities that you have and only focus on what you really need to do. You can also practice relaxation techniques such as meditation, muscle relaxation and deep breathing. All of these can be really beneficial to you. And again, there are a lot of other hotlines that you can call or text. You can text CONNECT to 741741. Now on to the second topic for today, four tips on how to stay productive. So my first tip is maintain your schedule. It is super beneficial to start your week uh, writing, sit down and invest some time into 
planning out your week and write down exactly what you want to do and what you want to get done. A lot of our schedules have changed because of the circumstances that we're in and that's okay. Now is a perfect time to create new habits for yourself and to stop doing bad habits. 40 to 45% of our daily activities are habits. So at first, you know, you have to work your way up to creating that habit to make it part of your daily activity. But once you do that, it's going to be like human nature and you're going to be able to do it so easily. So after you invest time into creating your schedule for the week, try your best to stick to it. Wake up at the same time every day, just like you would um, if you were to go to class or go to work. So wake up, do your morning routine and get your day started. Since we are at home all day, I know it's super easy to stay up late and to want to sleep in every day, but we need to try our best uh, to get ourselves into that system of waking up early and going to bed at the same exact time to help with our daily schedules. Tip number two, know your limit. Understand it's okay if not every day is super productive. Like I was saying earlier, it is this is a very hard situation that a lot of people are going through and some people are going through depression and anxiety during this time and other, many other things as well. And so it's okay if not every day is productive. Hopefully, the more you get used to creating new habits and uh, sticking to your schedule, then it'll be easier to stick with it and your days will progressively get more productive as you go on. It's also very important that when you're planning your week that you make realistic goals and expectations for yourself. You don't want to overwhelm yourself and give yourself all these unrealistic expectations and goals that you're not going to accomplish and then you're going to feel because you haven't accomplished them. So don't do that to yourself. And I understand that sometimes you know, maybe one or two days a week, you just feel like you can't even get out of bed and that you can't do anything for that day. And I want you to know that that is okay. We all have those days and this is a really tough time. So it's okay. Just make sure that if you do give yourself that day or two to kind of just do nothing, make sure you don't make it a reoccurring thing. And then again, hopefully as days goes on, this gets easier for you and you don't have to take as many days off. And if this is a reoccurring thing, then maybe you should look into what you're feeling more. Maybe you are depressed, maybe you do have anxiety. In that case, go back to the beginning of my video. <laughs> Tip number three, time management. It is super easy during this time to procrastinate, especially being at home. So it's really important that you do give yourself those breaks that you need, like maybe five minutes to play on your phone or do whatever you want, maybe even 10 minutes. But then after that, a lot of time, you need to get back to your work or to your school studies that you're doing. Tip number four, exercise. Exercise is a great way to start or end your day or even to have a break in the middle of your day to just get a nice good sweat in. This helps you release endorphins to make you feel good and hopefully it will make you feel more productive as well. Even if you only do like 30 minutes, that's still good. You can do 30 minutes of yoga in the beginning or end of your day or even since we're sitting all day long, you can even take a part of your day and just stretch. It's it hurts your back just sitting all day or hunch over over your desk doing stuff. So if you just get up and do some upper body stretching, it'll really help loosen and relax your muscles. And plus, it'll be a good break from studying. And if you don't want to exercise alone, then video chat one of your friends. Video chat one of your cousins or family members. Me and my best friend Jamie have started to FaceTime each other while we work out and I find that to be a lot of fun. Now, on to topic number three, how to stay engaged in your online classes. So this is kind of my personal opinion and what has helped me stay engaged during my science online classes. It's really important to actively take notes. Even though Zoom lectures are recorded and you think, oh, I can just go back to them and rewatch them. Yes, you can, but it's still important to take notes as the professor is talking to you and it'll help you stay engaged. Most professors actually want you to have your video camera on so that they feel like they're actually talking to people and so that they can gauge if like, how many people are understanding the material, especially for science-based classes. I'm taking a bio class right now and there are 70 people in the class but only like eight of us have our video cameras on. So the professor is actually able to like talk to us and see if we are understanding the material and it actually feels more one-on-one -on -one since he kind of is only really engaging with us since everybody else doesn't have their video camera on. So it's kind of nice. 
Plus, when I have my video camera on, I feel obligated to participate and be active in the class. And it helps me not get distracted by my phone because I feel like the professor is literally watching me, so I can't. And it's good because it keeps me accountable. And I know a lot of people don't like to have their video camera on because maybe they don't look good or they don't think they look good. But honestly, don't worry about that. Nobody is going to be just staring at you. We're all here to learn, so try not to think about that. And also ask questions. Even if you don't want to have your video on, you can always unmute your mic and ask questions. And I know professors are more than happy to answer your questions, so don't feel afraid uh, to ask questions. On to topic number four, three tips on studying. Tip number one, set up a designated area to where you only study at. If this is in a separate room, that would even be better. But if it's not, then that's fine. Just make sure that that space is the only space where you only study or work at. This will help acclimate your body to where when you go to that area, your body will eventually catch on to its study time. We need to get to work and that'll help you stay productive on your studying. Tip number two, set time increments. Tell yourself, if you can't focus, then tell yourself, okay, I'm going to study for 30 minutes straight or work for 30 minutes straight, and then I'm going to take a little five, 10 minute break, and then I'm gonna get back to it. This will help you stay on task and get more studying done versus studying and then playing on your phone and studying and stuff like that. Or maybe you can do go an hour with studying and then have like a 10 minute break. So you can work with these numbers to see what works best for you. Everyone is going to be different. Tip number three, just because you're home all day doesn't mean you have to study all day or work all day. Allow yourself to have some free time to do things that you want to do, like watch a TV show, play video games. It's okay, don't feel obligated. As long as you have a somewhat, whatever productive is to you, as long as you have your productive day, then it's okay to take some time off. Feel free to comment down below on your studying tips and what you'd like to do to help you stay productive. So that is all for my video today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button or you follow me on my social medias. I'll see you guys next week. Until next time, bye.